So we all know lasagna, but it requires a lot more work to get a layer in and do all this and that. But there's an easier version out there that I would argue could contest it. And you can use any noodle you want. Or well, it should be ziti, but you get the point. Ziti and I go way back. My mom used to make it for me all the time. It was sort of one of those things you flip-flop between penne and ziti, but as I've kind of grown older, I've realized you gotta use ziti because that's the name. Otherwise, it's just baked penne. That doesn't sound right. Well, I baked my penne. The point is, it's very simple. You don't have to have a bunch of crazy long noodles. You can use a very basic noodle, very basic sauce, put it in a pan with cheese, put it in the oven, and that's it. But you think we're just gonna stop there? No. We're gonna make the traditional, most known common version there is, and then we're gonna amp it up and make it as fancy and uh, JW, if you will. So with that said, let's make this, shall we? We have two versions for you. Typical Big Ziti and our fancy Quattro Formaggio version. Let's begin with Mr. Easy. In a medium pot or a Dutch oven, this is a five quart, add just a thin layer of vegetable oil to coat the bottom, about two tablespoons, heat that over medium heat until it's hot, hot, oh. Then add in one pound or 450 grams of Italian sausage and half a pound or 225 grams of ground beef. Let that sear for two to three minutes, then flip and sear on the other side till you get some nice browning. Then using a potato masher, mash that brother up. You know, this is a classic papa meat mashing technique. That uh, sounded better when I wrote it. Then let that cook over medium high heat until the fat begins to render out and you get some nice quith bits in the meat. Remove that from the pot and place to the side, then add three tablespoons or 40 milliliters of olive oil to the pot, then add one sweet onion that's been diced, season that to taste with salt, saute your little man for about three minutes or just until softened, then add four cloves of finely chopped garlic, saute that for 20 seconds, that's 20 seconds. You go to 23 seconds and it's ruined. Good job. That's a joke. Anyway, add your meat back, stir together, then add one and a half, 24 ounce cans of crushed tomatoes, stir that together and let that simmer for five minutes or until slightly reduced. Then season that with a small pinch of sugar. Now while the sugar is optional, it does help curb some of that tomato acidity. Yeah, you like that little bit of food science for you? Right, so the sauce is done. Separately get a pot of water, season it generously with salt, and please, I'm begging you, stop with the unsalted pasta water. It's depressing. The water needs to be heavily salted. Think salty like the ocean, you know? Once that's boiling and nice, add in one pound or 450 grams of <sighs> dried ziti pasta. Yes, I know it's store-bought, but that's the point of this first version. I'm joking, there's nothing wrong with dried pasta, okay? Relax. Cook that until just under al dente. So knock off like one minute from its recommended cook time. Then using a spider, transfer your pasta to your sauce. It's totally fine if you get a little pasta water in there. And as a matter of fact, it's kinda good because the starch in the water helps thicken in most of our sauce. Stir your sauce and pasta together until thoroughly incorporated. From there, let's make our cheese mix. Basically, 14 ounces or 400 grams of fresh mozzarella, grated, of course. You always grate fresh, right? Yet again, pre-grated makes papa sad. Anyway, follow that up with four ounces or 113 grams of grated parmigiano reggiano. Then toss those together, and that's the cheese mix. Get a 9x13 baking dish, give it a light spray with nonstick, then add in half your pasta and its sauce, evenly spread it out, then add half of a 15 ounce or 425 gram tub of full fat ricotta. I like to do little randomized spoonfuls. Then follow that with half of your cheese mixture, top with the other remaining half of your pasta and its sauce, your other half of ricotta, spooned on, and of course, the other half of your cheese. Now that looks like a god dang casserole, if I ever seen one. From there, all you gotta do is Hello, Papa is here. Don't be scared. Are you salting your tomatoes? That's not the point. The point is, you need to buy my book. It's available on Amazon. The link's in the description. Please, go there. Okay? It means a lot to me. I know you want this. You've been asking for it. I work really hard on it. Goodbye. You know what to do. Don't hesitate. Pop it in the oven, set to 375 Fahrenheit for 35 minutes or until all the cheese is melted and boobling, and you've got some nice cheese browning. Now pull that out, let your sweet child cool for 15 minutes. Trust me, this thing is f hot. Your mouth and esophagus will thank you for your patience. Now all there's left to do is hit it with some fresh basil, snag a nice big boy spoon, and scoop it as much as your heart desires. Now let's taste test Mr. Traditional first. We're back filming after three weeks of not filming at all. All thanks to Vikram. Yay! Vikram got engaged. It's so exciting. It's a, da, da. By the time you're seeing this, it's actually not that far into the future because now we're almost behind on our uploads. We usually film quite a bit ahead. How do I eat? I forgot how. This whole three weeks, I didn't eat any at all. Okay. 
My childhood is coming back to me. There's rose petals falling. I'm, I'm crying. There's, a, there's two babies crying. I don't know who the second one is. And wait, the baby's in a, a bed, but it's made of pasta. This, this is impossible. This is nostalgia at its finest. The caramelized cheese, it's, I mean, it's ultra rich, but somehow balanced at the same time with the tomato. You've got the nicely cooked noodles, a little overcooked, but you know, that's the quality of a casserole. It's fine, okay? Maybe undercook it a little more, okay? It's basically like the easiest lasagna ever and somehow different at the same time by having a freaking ziti. Some people use penne. Let me explain something. Is it baked penne or baked ziti? It's baked ziti. Use ziti, please. Unless you make the pasta by hand, in which case we're gonna do that right now. Okay, next is Papa's ziti, which is actually not gonna be made with ziti, so maybe it's more like Papa's, uh, ba -ba -ba -ba. yeah. Which you might guess is only just a tiny, 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 oh so minute touch more involved. First step, pasta. So look, of course you can use store-bought, but I had to pull out the big guns and grab the good old pasta extruder. If you have one, great. If not, the link for this is in the description, or you can just observe the beauty of pasta extrusion here today. Real simple, I started with 500 grams of all-purpose flour, no salt, turn the bad boy on, toss in about 190 milliliters of filtered water, and well, that's actually it. The machine does pretty much all the work for you here. The attachment on this guy is technically a penne setting, but I cut it into longer tube shapes. It kind of mimic a cooler, fancier ZD, if you will. You know, I don't know. Thought it looked nice and organic. Wow, I... Do you, do you hear that? It sounded like some sort of hoity-toity art director or something. Yes, the pasta was a little more organically shaped. It had character, love, sensuality to it. Anyway, let that thang. Keep pushing your pasta, cutting, pushing, and cutting. Onto a landing pad such as a baking sheet until all of your pasta is X. Dust it with a little extra all-purpose flour, give it a gentle toss to coat, and that's your pasta. Now for the sauce, get a large saute pan or a medium pot and add four ounces or 113 grams of finely and evenly diced guanciale. You know, starting with a nice knife cut makes a big difference in the final product. Add a little glug of extra virgin olive oil, turn the heat to medium, and let that saute stirring occasionally until your guanciale has rendered nearly all of its fat and it's got a beautiful browning over each piece. Then add one brunoise shallot, three cloves of rough chopped garlic, fresh cracked black pepper, and salt to taste. Give that a little stir and let that guy sweat, stirring occasionally until the veg softens, about two minutes. Then add two and a half teaspoons of fennel seed powder, one and a quarter teaspoon of red pepper flakes. Stir that together, saute till fragrant, about 20 seconds. Then add one six ounce or 170 gram can of good quality tomato paste. Stir and saute until the tomato paste begins to develop some color, about one to two minutes, then add half a cup of beef broth. Then scrape that out, transfer into a small bowl, then in that same pan, we're gonna add our meat, but hold on there, partner. For the meat, you're gonna need two pounds or 905 grams of boneless pork shoulder, cut into thin strips, half a pound or 225 grams of boneless beef short ribs, also cut into strips, and a quarter pound or 113 grams of prosciutto rough chopped. Toss all that together in a bowl, and here we go, Josh being extra again. Pass through a meat grinder until all of it is ground together, and you have a beautiful little meaty man, oh so meaty. Then take that mixture, knead it together, add it to your pan, sear the same as before, flatten it out for three minutes, flip and sear on the other side, then using a potato masher, well, mash it up. But this time, once you have your crumble, we're gonna let it render out its fat even more. Really let it fry in that fat, so you get nice little brown crispy bits that are almost like little meaty jewels scattered across the pan. From there, add your guanciale tomato paste back to the pan, followed by a 24 ounce can of crushed tomatoes, give that a stir, then add one tablespoon of fresh chopped rosemary, stir that together, season to taste with salt and simmer for two to five minutes, or until lightly reduced and that's your sauce. Trust me, this, this thing be thangin'. Then just like before, salty boiling water, add in your pasta, and now, since this stuff is fresh, you're only gonna need to cook it for about 45 seconds, then immediately spider that out of the pot and into the sauce. Fold that together, and that's your pasta with a little bit of sauce mixed together. Now, for the cheese mixture, let's first look at the ricotta. Fold in a small handful of basil that's been chiffonade cut. Now in a medium bowl, add 12 ounces or 340 grams of grated scamorza cheese. Yeah, see, that sounds fancy, doesn't it? Look, mozzarella is a fine alternative, but this is the good stuff. Followed by three ounces or 85 grams of grana padano cheese. Not to be confused with parmigiano, okay? It's different. Then three ounces or 85 grams of pecorino romano cheese. Toss all those together and that's your cheesy mixture. All right, it's layering time. Get your greased nine by 13 pan. Add in half your pasta and its sauce. Then half your ricotta mixture dotted all over. Half of your cheese mixture. The other half of your pasta. The other half of your ricotta. And finally, the other half of your cheese. Then the same thing. Pop that into an oven set to 375 for 35 to 40 minutes or until browned and boobling. And that's your big fancy man ziti. Now scoop that brother out, shed a tear for the cheese pole, hit your serving with some chiffonade basil, and let us decide if Mr. Traditional can engage in hand-to-hand -hand combat against Papa's ziti. Oh!
Ooh, I kept the plate in the oven to keep it warm. And that is the second time today that I've done that. Not keep it warm, I meant burn myself. Okay, we got our homemade pasta, extruded pasta. Um, technically, it was called a penne attachment, didn't quite look like penne, and so I thought, well, maybe if I make them sort of more straight. Not the best extruder, not gonna lie. This is the fancy one. The ingredients are different. Oh God, that's not. There wasn't supposed to be a winner, which is better or not. It was more like fancy, non-fancy, but instantaneously, easily, this is accidentally the winner. There's depth of flavor. It's not just like, oh, a little marinara sauce. There's a tomato and kind of a little faint garlic, I think somewhere in there and like 4,000 miles away. This, it's like every single bite. The different cheeses. It's a quattro formaggio, formaggio. Combined with the fresh ground meat. I mean, we really, we really went all out with this. We might as well have just made our own cheese and became a dairy farmer you know, in like Wisconsin. Anyway, this one's really good. Bikram, I think you should taste these two and tell me which one is your favorite. <sighs> mm. Yeah, instantly. Easy. They're both good by all means, but this is like, if you gave me 50 pounds of this, I would eat it all. <laughs> you wanna know what else has Papa's noodles being pushed out and cut off? Wow, that's visceral. B-roll. All right, guys, and that is it. So we made our big ziti two different ways, the original version, or well, the more commonly known version, and then of course, a fancier version. Quattro formaggio. Pretty good, right? Italians, can we get a rating? I would give that a three ZDs out of olive oil. Whether you choose the fancy version or the normal version, it's really not that much more, oh, I guess it is more difficult. Well, that's the way it usually goes around here, but it was significantly better, so it's worth the extra effort. Choose your own adventure, you won't be sorry, and if you enjoyed this video or you learned something, leave a like, subscribe, and I will see you